Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today, we're going to the farmer's market. Stay tuned. Y'all, welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back. To all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers, thank you all so much for the wonderful ways in which you support me and my channel. I really, truly appreciate it. Y'all, here in my part of North Carolina, it's going to be a rainy day today, but we have had some beautiful, beautiful glimpses of spring. And that just reminds me of all of the farmer's markets that are about to open throughout my city. And y'all, I love going to the farmer's market. My sisters and I go all the time. We have so many in the area and we have one that is actually right across the street from where I am right now that we visit all the time. So knowing some of the items that I like to purchase from the farmer's market, it put me in a farmer's market frame of mind on today's project. So y'all, what we'll be doing today is we'll be taking some beautiful farmer's market themed paper and we're going to create these beautiful little farmer's market bags. We're going to make them using just two pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper. So if you have plenty of eight and a half by 11, this is going to be one of those projects that will be perfect for what you have. Let's go ahead and flip to the overhead camera because y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all. So here's a closer look at our farmer's market bag. When finished, it measures five and a half by eight, and it is one and a half inches deep. We can make these deeper if we want. I am going to stick with one and a half on this because I like the finished size of the bag. And I love this farmer's market paper. The strawberry is just so stinking cute. And the one I'm using today is even cuter. So this is a digital collection on my website. If you're interested, it will be linked in the description box below. If not, you don't have to have these digital papers. You don't have to have any of my papers. You can use your own beautiful papers from your stash. And then y'all, I had a scrap piece from another project that I decided I could go ahead and just make into a little tag if I wanted to give this to someone. I just think that this is really sweet. You can add handles if you want but I like the feel of just having this be a carrying bag and you can actually punch a little hole here if you want as well. So here is the beautiful paper I'm going to be using today. We're going to be using this beautiful avocado paper that has speckled polka dots throughout. It is so, so sweet. And both of my papers, I ran through my printer to get the back side printed as well. So if you've never done double-sided printing, just work with your printer a little bit because you can get the same look. But I absolutely love this avocado paper. It is eight and a half by 11. The colors are so vibrant. And so what we're going to do, y'all, is we're going to score at one and a half on all four sides. So that's one and a half on all four sides. And this paper that I'm using, this is a slightly heavier text weight paper. It is not a card stock, and I will have it linked in the description box below. I'm actually trying another paper maker for my lighter weight papers. And this one is giving me that vibrancy that I want. So I'll have both papers that I use listed in the description box below. So what I did is I scored at one and a half on all four sides. One of these sides, we will fold over in this direction. And the others will fold over like this. And we do that with both. So I'll take this piece and because everything is going in this direction, I'm going to go ahead and just do this to make sure that I have everything oriented properly. For those of you who are new to my channel or haven't watched very many of my videos, I call myself an upside down girl because I have a history of putting things on upside down. 
And for those of you who've been with me for a while, you definitely know this. So what we'll be doing here is we'll go to the score mark and we're going to angle, angle, and we'll angle that as well. We're going to angle on this side and this side. So let's just go ahead and I'm just going to move those out of my way and I'm going to place some glue on this piece and we're going to fold it over. And I'll just work that glue in so that we don't have any glue streaks. So there's that piece. And this is how the piece looks so far. Now we're going to come down to the bottom and we're going to remove these two corner pieces all together. So I am just going to cut them out and we remove them. like this. So, so far piece number one will look like this. We're going to go ahead and bring in piece number two and in piece number two here at the top I am going to go ahead and just remove the corner pieces here at the top. I'm just removing these. And I actually could have angled this a little bit, and I think I will. Then I'm going to take my tape runner. and I, So then I apply some adhesive and fold it over. And you can see that I use tape and I use glue. Y'all, it really is up to you. I just wanted to use both to show you that you can use both. So now you'll have two pieces that look like this. We'll take this piece, flip it over, and we are going to turn it this way and notch out in this direction and angle in like that. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We'll cut here and we'll notch. So now you'll have two pieces that look like this. What we're going to do is we're going to take this flap and we'll be joining it to the middle part of this flap. So I am just going to take some glue because I like to use glue when I'm doing a joint like this. And we're going to take this piece and we're just going to place it down, trying to get it nice and even and I like to use the glue on this part because you do have a little bit of wiggle room if you use tape you have pretty much committed yourself to getting that stick right the first time so now that we have it like this we will be folding in these pieces I will be taking some glue placing it on this piece then I'm going to take some glue and place it on this piece. So now we take it, we just slide this in like that, matching the bottom, and then you're just going to match the top. The easiest thing to do is to go ahead and take that piece and fold it in here at the top. And then I can place it on its side, go in and really work my stick. Now some of you are going to want to know why I didn't put this on the inside so that I could fold out and have it consistent all the way around. I like having the size of mine be a contrast to what I have here and here. It's all personal preference. So if you want to have the consistent look of the fold over all the way around, instead of placing your glue on the piece that has the tab, you place your glue on the piece that doesn't. That way, when you fold in and you fold over, you can now take the tab and put it on the outside like that. 
over here, my tab is going on the inside because that's my personal preference, but you can do it however you want. So I am just going to take some glue, put some glue on that tab, fold that back so y'all can see what I'm doing here. And we're going to place our glue on this piece. And you can see that I didn't place any glue on this piece yet. So now I'll take this, we'll fold it in like this, fold this over, take this piece and just go ahead and tuck it in. And that way you'll get everything nicely aligned. And now I'm just going to go on the inside with my bone folder and smooth everything out. So now I can take my glue, we can put that in. And so now y'all, we have another delightful farmer's market bag. I am just going to take my fingers and pinch in on those sides and pinch it into the bag shape. And how far you pinch is completely up to you. It all depends on how you want your bag to look. And then to close it, I am just going to add Velcro dots. Now this is optional. You really don't have to do this, but I am just going to place those Velcro dots right here on the inside where I pinched ends. So you're able to see the pinch right there and then I put the Velcro dot next to it. So let's do the same thing over here. And I'm going to pinch to close these. So there y'all, we now have our second five and a half by eight by one and a half inch farmer's market bag. Y'all, these are so stinking cute and they are so easy to make. I can see these being used for decorative soaps, for small toiletries, for sweet treats if you want. So many different uses for our little farmer's market bags. Y'all, this was a very quick video, but I wanted to make sure I share with you an idea or two or three on ways that we can use our eight and a half by 11 inch papers to create something oh so beautiful. And this is oh so beautiful, but it's such a fun look. So I really appreciate you going to the farmer's market with me today. I hope we've had fun. If you have liked this video, and I certainly hope that you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, and be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.